every single one of us is carrying a ticket at the moment. A one-way ticket. Not one cent to cost you. But we want this ticket to be first class. We want this ticket to be business class, the highest of class. Not economy or middle class, no. But the way to make it first class, business class, is how? To prepare, to work hard, to sacrifice. For tomorrow we are going to enter that little black hole. Tomorrow we are going to enter that little black hole with no electricity in it, no telephone in it, no mother, father, brother, sister, wife, husband, nephew, niece, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle and aunt. No one at all. No food, no drink, no dinners, no means of comfort. Darkness surrounds you, angels confront you, actions unfolded. This is tomorrow. That grave will be either a garden in, of paradise or a hole in the whole fire. It will be the first stage of the hereafter, the life of the interspace, the life of the grave. If you, saved, if you are saved from it, what comes after it is much, much, much better, much easier. If you are not saved from it, Allahu Musta'an, what comes after it. It is apparent, brothers and sisters, that the best protection against the punishment of the grave is to have the true belief in Allah Ta'ala, the true Tawheed, the true recognition of Allah Ta'ala, and avoid major sins. If you've got this, Alhamdulillah, by the will of the Almighty Lord, you will not be punished in the grave. There are other specific actions mentioned in the authentic Sunnah that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us of that likewise will protect you from the punishment of the grave. They are martyrdom on the battlefield, standing guard in the way of Allah Ta'ala. They are dying because of an abdominal disease. We cite in Surah Tabarak, Surah Al-Mulk, and dying on Fridays. Inshallah Ta'ala, we will begin those which are known as the saviors of the grave next week due to it being a long topic. The saviors of the grave will initiate Inshallah Ta'ala with next week and that which benefits the person in the grave will be the topic to come after this. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا اللهم أعفي عن الحمد يا رب العالمين. We know that the Almighty Lord created humans and jinn and all creation. And thus when we all die, we are going to be decomposed. Whether we are being blown up in an aeroplane or by TNT or by any other means. Whether we are burnt and thus become ashes thrown in the ocean or on earth, the end of us is we are going to be decomposed. As the hadith mentions that every single son of Adam becomes deteriorated and nothing is left of him except the coccyx bone. And the coccyx bone is a triangular bone on the bottom or the base of the spine. And that the Almighty Lord will reconstruct the body from. The one that created it the first time is indeed the one that will create it the second time. And everything is easy for him and nothing is hard for him. Who will be the first man that the earth will quake over, you can say? Who will be the first man that will raise from his grave? It will be no other than the leader of creation, the best of creation, the one that walked this earth, the most pure man on earth that ever lived, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fadl ya Muhammad. He will be the last man to be resurrected. Allah ta'ala alam. We did mention last week, or the week before that, 
that there are major sinners in the grave that will be punished, correct? Now, there are among them, or the major sinners, are Muslims. Major sinners who are Muslims, they get punished. Some's eyes and noses and mouths will be ripped to the back of their head. Others will be belted of a boulder, spitting their head open. Others will be fed stones or boulders. Others will be hung with their hamstrings upwards and ripped likewise. Others will have other things happening to them. These are Muslims. Now, the Almighty Lord, out of His mercy, may punish them in the grave, however, relieve them from the evil tormentation in hellfire when they are resurrected. If a Muslim committed major sin, Allah Ta'ala may punish him or he may not punish him. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika lima yasha. Allah does not forgive one thing, which is association. But if he gives anyone lesser than that to him, he pleases. He's the all merciful. He's the all forgiver. He's loving, he's caring, he's affectionate, our Lord. Allahumma bestow upon us your affection. So, for that reason, the Almighty Lord may forgive the major sinner or he may punish him. However, at the end of the day, the believer will never remain in hellfire. He will be, if he gets punished, to the time that he will, uh, due to his sin, whether, whatever it may be, then he gets taken out of whole fire after his time is done. He'll be taken through the river of life, a river, which he'll be cleansed, because he'll be like charcoal, black, from the hellfire. And they'll be known as the people of charcoal. And first they enter paradise after that. This is the destiny of every single Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Is it haram to read Quran? Or make du'a on a dead person. It is alright to make du'a but not Quran. It is alright and advisable to make du'a, supplicate for him, but do not read the Quran for him. The famous people, Tabarakallah, the famous so called pop stars and pop singers and movie stars, and they pay tens of thousands of dollars for their grave. And they even make houses, believing that Tabarakallah is going to save them from any corruption or wind or rain or storms and so forth. Muhammad, when they go into that grave, bro, if they're not a believer, Nusallallahu al al It absolutely becomes constricted, constrained, restricted. It breaks them. It breaks their ribs. Huh? Like that. Nusallallahu al Wallahi, brothers and sisters, it's scary stuff. It's freaky business. Being an unbeliever and going into that grave. Nusallallahu al-Afiyya. Nusallallahu al-Afiyya. And we heard in our last talk that the predecessors would take their animals, would they not? To the graves of whom? The disbelievers. Why? When an animal would get colic, and it makes a constipate. Colic makes you constipate. This is the animals, especially the animals. And they can't burp. Because horses do not burp. Nor do cows. So if they constipate, what they do is roll on the earth. And they roll and roll and roll until they break their intestines. And they die after that. So in order for you to relieve it from its problem, if you haven't got any drugs, enough money to give it drugs, dawa, medicine, it will die. So what you do, you take it, or what they used to do, as been mentioned by the predecessors, is take it to the graves, the cemetery of the disbelievers. Because the animals hear the punishment of the dead. So they'll take it to the graves, the cemetery of disbelievers, and as soon as they entered there, it would lose its colic. It would drop the, bur, the, the stall, the droppings, and then run for its life. And that would save it. It's a mentioning... Allah Ta'ala A'lam, if it's true or not. Al-Qantara is a bridge in, in the hereafter. And that is, as the scholars have said, after the Sirat. Whereby people take their rights from those who have oppressed them, who have wronged them. And that bridge will be the time 